Gogeta to take down Broly in uh, Alter Instinct. Huh, that's an interesting thing. Is that like a theory or is that confirmed? I have no idea. Oh, huh. I mean, I, I don't still know how I, uh, quite how I feel about Broly being the uh, topic of the new movies, but I guess that makes him yeah. canon now since, I don't know. Or was I, he always canon? The, he was not. None of the movies are canon officially. Um, but it's a new origin for him, so I'm okay with that. Akira Toriyama is coming up with it. So it's not it's not that Broly. That Broly is not canon. Right. This is a new Broly. God, it, that's Broly, why. Man. Oh. Yeah, that's why everyone who's like Broly's canon, I'm like, no, Broly's not a character. That Broly is not canon. Yeah. <laughs> that Broly never existed. Well, now I see him. why we never record this way, man. Why? It's a fucking robo voice that we're still getting. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's just gonna happen. It's the way it's gonna have to be. Was yep. it like that the one time we did? Fuck if I know, man. I don't know. That's like so long ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. So how's everybody Master doing today? Ultra Instinct Mastered. That's Ultra. what it's called. That's why it's called MUI. Mastered Ultra Instinct, huh? Yes. See, the partial Ultra Instinct is called Ultra Instinct Sign, and the full Ultra Instinct is just called Ultra Instinct, at least in the uh, in the Japanese dub. Yeah, the, and then uh, I guess at Super. the very end... At the very end of Super, he's got Master Ultra Instinct. <clears throat> yeah, and yet he can't enter into it um, on his own. Like he, he can't do it willingly, like he can Super Saiyan God, which is kind of funny yeah. to me because at the end of the series, you know, Vegeta is like yelling at him, like, "What the hell did you do?" Blah blah blah. And he's like, "I don't know how to activate it." <laughs> it, it just happened. happened. Yeah, no, it literally, uh, like, it literally that, just happened. Cool. It's like, oh. <clears throat> but I gotta um, say, it's it's definitely the coolest transformation that they've come up with so far. I really do. Like, it's stupid, and it's in whatever, but it's also really, really cool. Um, Yeah, I, you know, it's one thing where, like, I used to, th I still think that Super Saiyan 4 looked cool when they came up with that for GT. Yeah. Even though it was so wild. But Super Saiyan 3 to God, Super Saiyan, there's, like, no... Super Saiyan 3 just feels like it's, there's no point to it, you know? I, I think it's just a, now. Yeah, it's definitely more of a stopgap than yeah. anything. Like, like, because at that point when he used it, that was the peak of his power. And I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like in the earlier it in the series. Him real quick, too. Like, yeah. I think he can do God form longer than he can do Super Saiyan 3. Well, I know he can do the Super Saiyan Red form, like the Super Saiyan Red God form, mm. a lot longer than he can do Blue. Um, blue is more okay. draining on his stamina, and that that is actually pointed out by Wiss during the Super Tournament, um, where there there were points where he just activates really quick Red over over Blue because it drains the stamina less, but he still gets a huge speed boost. <laughs> so yeah, I I don't really know like. But uh, yeah, I think Super Saiyan 3 is at best just an unrefined form that yeah. was, you know, a stopgap until they revealed Super Saiyan God. Almost like um, the that Super Saiyan Ultra. I, I remember that's what we called it in the American version. I don't know if that's the official name. The in-between version before they actually hit two. Um, the Ascend it is what I think Ascend the official it. name is. Yeah. yeah, where they're like the big bulky Saiyan where... Um, well, like Vegeta and Trunks both go ultra bulky is also yes. a, a form of ascendant, but um, obviously that didn't work. No, it was it, it was not good because they got slow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they had a ton of power, but what good is the power if you can't hit somebody? Exactly. It's my so favorite anyway, line from the Garlic Junior Saga. So, so anyway, we've already started well. recording. So how y'all doing today? <laughs> hey, everybody! You know we're the ungodly geeks. I'm, I'm Luke. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of delay between us. We're recording over Discord today. We had some uh, equipment malfunction that um, just kind of came out of nowhere. It sidelined us while we were attempting to record this this past week. So, you know, we're kind of scrambling right now. It's Monday morning. We normally record Friday morning. And, uh, yeah. 
So we yeah. release and we release in literally twenty four hours, and we're slapping some shit together real quick. Freaking lost a whole two hours almost of content between the behind the scenes and then the episode itself. Yeah. Just, um, God damn it. Our mixer board took a shit on us. It won't transmit data anymore over the USB, which is how we were doing it because the setup we had was kind of haphazardly thrown together a couple years back. And so I never, I, I've always meant to upgrade it and just never did. Yeah. So. I mean, it worked. It was, you know, we never had any issues before. It's just that mixer board apparently just didn't like us. <clears throat> and the thing is, is I don't know if it's the cable or if it's the board itself. I mean, the board itself still works. We still, it still, you know, does its whole audio thing, but it's, it's kind of whatever at this point. So, uh, you know, today we're using the much more reliable, my desktop computer to record everything. <laughs> yeah. Infinitely more powerful than the laptop that runs the studio. We're using our Blue Yeti mics and, of course, Discord to communicate. Yeah, which is why it might sound a little, you know, robotic and not all there, but we're here. I mean, Luke's never all there, but it kind of works out anyway. Well, that's true. No. Yeah. So today, <laughs> uh, you know, um, we're going to talk about a few different things. Uh, we're going to primarily focus on doing a sort of mini review of uh, Ant-Man. But yeah. uh, before we get into that, I, I got I to gotta laugh at this a little bit. And it's not like a PC versus Mac debate that I'm about to have. I just find mm -hmm. it, it really amusing. This is kind of why... Oh, I, I think I, I know what you're going to talk about. This is kind of why I don't like the way Apple does business. The newest MacBook Pros, they're really nice pieces of hardware. But if you opt for the higher-end MacBook Pro that has the Core i9 processor in it, you're going to have a bad time. And the reason for that is because of the way that Apple designs the MacBooks. They design them to be small. They design them to be sleek and lightweight and most of all, quiet. And that's a big issue because the Core i9, pardon me, requires a whole fucking lot of cooling. You yeah. know what? You know what the, uh, so they use the, the highest end uh, Core i9, I believe, the 8950HK or maybe just the H. But no matter what, um, the base frequency for this processor is 2.9 gigahertz, a six core processor. So pretty similar to what's in my, my machine now with my, uh, Ryzen five. Um, it can't even maintain its base frequency without being put into a freezer. <laughs> um, that, that's a, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, in, in practice, in just normal use, it actually gets outperformed by the 2017 model with the Core i7 in it because when the processor gets to a point where it's trying to it's actually working it throttles itself back so it doesn't overheat and fucking die and uh, I find that amusing you sit there and spend 26 or 2800 dollars on a laptop and you can't even actually use it at all because it can't even maintain its base frequency so it's is the laptop just dying out on people, or is it just slow as shit? It's slow as shit, basically. Anything that you would buy it for, like like let's say you buy it uh, because a Core i9 is real high end processor. It's really good, outperforms yeah. you know <clears throat> most other processors you would put up against it. Um, so you would buy this 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 particular MacBook Pro for stuff like Final Cut Pro ten. I was just you know, going to say you're doing editing, you're doing some big stuff. You're spending what two grand, three grand on this. Yeah, especially if you decide to opt for like the one with four terabytes of storage, you're really you're really working with, with video files and shit, and so yeah. that's why you're buying it. You're buying it so that you get a a mobile workstation, basically. Yeah, minimum of twenty eight hundred dollars. Yeah, for yeah. this computer. So you spend twenty eight hundred dollars for the base model, and even the base model can't can't do what it's supposed to do. It can't reach its pardon me advertised speeds, which I think is amusing to me. Uh, because they checked the speed while it was inside of the deep freezer. <laughs> yep. That's the only way that you can uh you can even maintain the base clock. Not even like the highest clock it can go to, which is uh somewhere in the four gigahertz range, it can't even maintain its base clock. <laughs> Cause Apple that uh, and this like they make nice hardware, um, but I think this is the first time where I can go, this is not nice hardware. You, you can't even use the thing for what you would buy it for. No. 
So I, I, I had to, I had to, funny. I just had to harp on that a bit. Like it, it boggles my mind that you're so worried about this thing being quiet and making noise that you wouldn't give it the ability to maintain its temperature and 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 take the heat from such a such a high core processor because you got six six cores, twelve threads. It's going to generate a fuckload of heat. I know something about that because I have a six core, twelve thread processor. And even with my air conditioner running full blast, if I'm playing a game, there's a good chance I could be sweating as I sit here. <laughs> so, uh, and the does it have problems with battery life too? Being uh, to the best of my teensy, knowledge, tiny? I mean it's so it's so new um, that I don't know anything about the battery life yet because I get literally just released. Okay. Um, but given Max history with that and Intel's decent. I can tell it has great optimization when it comes to stuff like that. It probably yeah. has acceptable battery life for what it is. Cause, I mean, it's yeah, it's a it's an ultra ultra book, but it's like a mobile workstation shoved down into the size of an ultra book. Um, mm-hmm. Now I can definitely tell you that one of the things that contributes to batteries dying is heat, and yeah. that Core i nine generates a fuckload of heat. But as I've also stated before. It can't even reach its base clock without throttling itself thermally, so it, it's I don't know it's kind of a kind of a mixed bag. I could assume battery life is probably fine, but if it can't even maintain it, that's only probably because it can't even reach its base clock, let alone you know any decent high clock rates that would drain the battery. But on the other end. You know, because that CPU has to work for a longer time because it can't hit its space clock if you're doing something serious with it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they then again, uh, bad, Apple has they have a good track record of having having battery life too, even in their smaller laptops. Right. I don't see why that would be a problem. But you know, I mean, nobody at the Apple was like, hey, "We might have a problem here." No, apparently just, not. Like, like, we'll like it's just that. Wow, you really just fucked up completely. Um, what? You you roboted out like really. really oh, did bad. it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. I I don't see why nobody. Well, I mean, I companies do that kind of shit all the time. But still, you'd think that somebody would have been like, "Hey, so uh, maybe we don't do." Oh, I see. My connection just up for a second there. Well, I I just swapped our. Uh... I just swapped us to the U.S. East because it was at the Central because okay. of Danny, but I switched it back to East. Okay. So sorry about that, guys. We're, we're we're trying to work through our slight technical <sighs> difficulties here. Yeah, this week's been odd, to say the least. <laughs> I mean, sit there, we recorded two hours of footage we can't even fucking use. So, yeah, you know, completely Yay. odd. Well, you know, yeah. that, that, like the most frustrating part about the whole situation is even if I had discovered this sooner, mm. I have no fucking idea what I would have done about it. Yeah, we would have just wor- probably worried the whole time and then, Cause, I, I mean, don't know. It would have looked at you like, Luke, I don't have the money for a new mixer board, but I think we need a new mixer board. Let's buy a new mixer board. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been, <clears throat> I don't have money for a new mixer board. Right. Uh well, right. let's uh, let's go sell let's go our s- kidneys. Yeah, let's go sell drugs. Okay. Sell drugs for a mixer board. Yep. Hey, hey, we don't actually need money. Just just get us a mixer board. <laughs> we'll sell you this brick of uh, coke that we found at the back of uh, Joe's fridge. Like, how about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, I mean it'll be all right. Um, I'll, I'll figure I'll figure this out. Um, yeah. Until then, we'll probably have to just do it this way. You know, there was something we started to talk about. I remember in the podcast, like in the recording we did, then we never finished talking about, we were talking about the, uh, uh, I don't know, it's like free to play games and stuff like that, that we're, we're trying again on the switch. Right. And, uh, I was, I, I meant to mention Warframe, which oh, is yeah. coming out. And yeah. I, honestly, I'm kind of excited for, it. I really wanted to play that game. And now I'm finally going to actually sit down and probably do it. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we've discussed how in the past, you know, that the Switch is the sort of, uh, you know, second chance system or in some instances like, oh, yeah, no, I'll try that because it's there and it's yeah. easy. It's um, just, it's accessible, you know? Yeah. 
And I mean, not to say that it's not accessible on our PCs, because of course it totally is, but the fact that it, it's something where we don't have to do anything terribly special, you know, we don't have to mess around with uh, performance and all that, it's just, it's just going to work. Which is, you know, I've always admired about consoles, you know, they have that, that developers have that one target, this is all it needs to do, it just needs to work here, and that's fine. Whereas with PCs, you know, you got endless amounts of, of hardware configurations and what works for one person isn't going to work for another necessarily. So, yep. So, I mean, that's, that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, I can try that now because I don't have to tweak anything. Although with something like Warframe, I probably wouldn't have any issues anyway, but still. No, I, I did I would either. Um, especially now. Right. But uh, yeah, no, I'm just interested. Also, it's the kind of thing where a game like that is a little intimidating, right? When you know there's already a player base that's uh, like a dedicated player base that, you know, on one hand, that can be great. They can, you know, show you the ropes, help you out. On the other hand, it feels a little intimidating to try and get into a game like that when you don't know, you know, you're learning and stuff. Yeah, I mean, um, especially when you I consider someone, that it's like, like, yeah, it's it's also like it's a competitive game too. So yeah, you're like, uh, no, yeah, yeah. getting that that uh, that entry, getting into it at first, if you don't know somebody who can help you out, I've heard is per- is a little more difficult with that game, right? Uh, not like you get your ass kicked by someone else because it's uh it's an, it's more cooperative than competitive, but uh still. Right. I don't know. I'm just, I, I just like, for some reason, I'm like, oh, cool. I didn't play it on the PS4 when it came to that. I didn't play it on the Xbox One and, or PC. And now it's like, oh, yeah, no, it's on Switch. I'll get it. And I'm I'm actually starting to use my Switch as a portable device a lot more now than I used to. Right. For, for the first, like, year I had the damn thing, I barely ever took it out of the dock. Now I'm using it upstairs, using it, in, like, when I'm at my computer waiting for PUBG matches to start. Like when I'm doing other things, I've got the switch out and I'm, uh, I'm just like, oh, OK, now I get it. Now I'm I'm more uh, OK with the controller, with the Joy-Cons now than I was. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you're sitting there and you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, this is awesome because you have that full featured console experience in yep. your hand and it's in front of you and it might die in two hours, but you're not going to need it that long. Yeah. Well, and, I've uh, got the uh, where well, you got, got the extended well, battery pack thing. Yeah, what was called the Switch Charge, I think is like the Swift Charge or something like that now. And I, I also like that because it hooks to the back, it actually gives me something to brace my fingertips on. So it feels, since a normal controller, you wrap your hands around. The Switch, it's like a Game Gear. They're just on the side. So you don't have anything really to grip. But with this thing, I feel it's obviously it's a, it's like another pound heavier pound and a half right and right. uh that just gives me something to brace on and i i absolutely love using this thing on here that and like you said two hours of battery life becomes like six or more yeah i mean honestly the only game i've played so far with a battery life is truly bad i mean it, it, or it's, it's something huge like uh breath of the wild i mean mm-hmm. even like mario kart i can play for at least three or four hours but breath of the wild totally kills and i totally have experience with that because for the first, what, five or so months, I had to use my Switch in portable mode because I didn't have <laughs> yeah. a dock. Because, you know, <laughs> Amazon, thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Oh, I really appreciate you, uh, your your delivery driver keeping my Switch. I That was awesome. Thank you. God, that was nuts. And then your neighbor's stealing, like, your next three packages. Uh, Yeah, like, they stole my... Um, my Harry's package, like it got, it got marked as delivered and it was delivered by the, U, the postal service, which a lot of people give postal service a shit. But with me, they have the only decent track record. They, of all the, what the four major shipping services, mm-hmm. um, with the exception of DHL. Cause I guess I've only used DHL. I've only had DHL ship me maybe two things. So I'm not even going to talk about them, yeah. but I can definitely tell you, um, of the three major, FedEx, UPS, and uh, USPS, USPS has lost the absolute least amount of packages, and it has the best track record for actually getting the you know packages to me. But there was one day my Harry's package, which is you know the uh, the monthly shaving cl- uh, club, which I'm going to switch away from after this, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, 
they uh, you know they dropped a package off, and it, it wasn't much. It was just another refill package where I got some more blades and some more shave gel and all that, just normal shit. And they always left it like on the floor by my door, and it's never been a problem. And one day I came in, and it had been marked as delivered, and I got up, and it wasn't there. And I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? So, you know, I, I just wait. And I come home the next morning and someone had dropped it off by the door. They're like, oh, sorry, this wasn't ours. Yeah, no shit. Your name is not Joseph <laughs> Gaston. Give me my fucking shit. Assholes. Right. Fucking assholes. And then, of course, there was the incidents, incident where, you know, you got me uh, a Mewtwo amiibo for Christmas. Never fucking came. Oh, that thing just disappeared. That thing just completely vanished. I, you know, it, it showed up um, on my my tracking dashboard on uh, United States Postal Service, and um, I didn't know what the fuck it was. And then it got delivered, and I went looking for it, and there was just nothing. And I'm like, well, I don't know what that was. So I guess there's no loss. But then we were talking <laughs> about it later, and you're like, oh yeah, there was this thing. I'm like, well, what the fuck, man? Yeah. So I yeah, should have fucking shitting on Amazon for that too, but I really didn't think about it because it was like, oh yeah, I forgot I sent you a thing. Well, I mean that, that wasn't Amazon's fault though either. Like you know, yeah. they they dropped it, they passed it off to the postal service. The postal service dropped it off in front of my 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 apartment door like they should have. It's just some fucktard in the in the building decided they wanted it more than I deserved it. I guess which is okay, fine. I hope. I hope they're using it. They're able to use it. You know, whatever. Nah, I hope they choked on it. That, that, that would, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know why they're I trying they to eat it. I they got it stuck up their anal cavity. I don't know why they're trying to eat it or stick it up their ass, infection. but you know what? I, I hope I hope it got stuck wherever. <laughs> stuck somewhere. Where Stuck wherever the most inconvenient spot it could be stuck for them. How about exactly. that? Exactly. <laughs> Alright, so we came here with a purpose. We're going to uh talk yep. about Ant Man and the Wasp. Hooray. Yay. Um we went and saw it uh, was the Friday after it was it Sunday after it released. Um I think it was that Sunday. So it was yeah, pretty close. Because we have uh, things in our way, like stupid work and um we also <laughs> kind of forgot about it. Uh not because you know, we don't keep up on the Marvel movies, because of course we do. It's part yeah. of what we do here, but uh, we kind of just forgot about it, man. Life's yeah. the last month has been hectic as far as everything goes. Well, like we said, I mean, with with work, you have to request that night the night off to be able to see a opening night movie, which for like Infinity War, and other big movies, yeah, we make sure we do that. Oh yeah, no, I absolutely off. had to I had to be off for both Deadpool and Infinity War. Yeah, um, that way we can do that discussion, you know, the next morning. But uh, for this movie, it was like, oh, shit, that's coming. And uh, yeah, no time to request off anymore. Well, yeah, because like I said, we, we kind of forgot about it. So yeah. um, we're going to go ahead and give you the, the too long, didn't listen. Uh, go see it. It's fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it takes what the first movie uh, did and does it better. And like, yeah, it was it was totally, totally good. You know, I think. My only complaint about it was that it didn't have enough of Luis's stories, but aside from that, you know, <laughs> it was good. Yeah, his he got one story, one one. I mean, they did similar to the the first movie. It wasn't exactly what I wanted. I was hoping he would just completely describe the war, or I mean, not Infinity War, but a uh, Civil War, and the whole lead up to it, or something. That you know, that would have been amazing if he had just yeah. recapped the entire first movie in his style. Like, I really I would love it if they would just pay him all the money and just do like a 40 minute or maybe not even that long. It wouldn't it wouldn't have to be that long, but get do an advertising or they should have done it for the 10 year anniversary for the Marvel movies. Have him describe like the timeline of things that happened. Right. In, yeah. Just, just from Iron Man all the way up. <laughs> yeah. Just have him tell the story of the MCU, basically. Exact. Oh man, to like catch somebody up, like to catch up, um, the Guardians or something, or to catch like some character up that they meet. Ugh, be be perfect, absolutely perfect. I yeah, you know, I would love to see him sitting there telling the story of like everything that's happened to like Rocket or something, because Rocket exactly. would have the absolute like perfect reaction. Like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, <laughs> he'd be like, "Wow, so that's all happened." 
I'm still taking that guy's arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I'm going to get that arm. Um, so the movie uh, like had a lot of great action sequences, but of course where it shines is is it's it's just dialogue. It's banter. It's banter, and it's all amazing. There's yeah. a lot of great character interaction. There's One of the things of- I love, uh, I, I, the Ant-Man movie, both the Ant-Man movies and I think Guardians – um, and I mean, Thor Ragnarok too, they set themselves kind of apart from the rest of the MCU movies in a way that while all of the movies, you know, they're starting to feel different, like they take and they do different things to make them interesting. The Captain America movies are more like spy movies, right. um, Iron Man movies, are like their own thing and everything. And then, you know, the first Ant-Man was a heist movie. This one was like a car chase movie. Yeah, like the whole movie was uh, that there were long sections of chase scenes and stuff. Like, like imagine Baby Driver, but with maybe maybe not quite as fancy driving tricks, and mm-hmm. with cars shrinking and beginning in size, like just changing size. Yeah, it was definitely uh, good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I think um, you know, like like the first time she shows off the ability to shrink the car down and then boom, pop it out. Oh man, that was so cool! Flips uh, like an SUV, right? <laughs> Just into other people, <laughs> killing probably killing like thirty innocent people in the car yeah. chases. Who knows? You know, it's just an SUV careening down. A yeah, it, the it's street. it's no big deal. It's just SUV crashing through a storefront. No one's getting hurt. <laughs> you know, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was still it, it was still fun as fuck to watch all those scenes um the one thing the one thing the major problem i have with the movie that i don't go see this movie if you're looking for story and plot yeah no i mean the story the story and plot are are i mean and, and it's just there's nothing really there it's just no. it, a lot of it doesn't make any sense and uh as always the main conflict is completely pointless Oh, it's stupid. It yeah, legitimately like, would have just been immediately solved with a two-minute conversation. Um, but, you like, know, they do a lot of setup before they actually even introduce the main conflict. Sure, sure. But the movie still would have been about 15 minutes long. Right. Which I guess <laughs> There would have been like one villain instead of two, and that one villain's just a dude with yeah. some hired goons who aren't very good at their job. They're they like, are, okay. they're, they're pretty terrible, but you know, he, <laughs> him being there kind of gives you someone to goof on, which I kind of like. Because, oh no, I mean, that's, that was one, like that was something we didn't mention before that. I, well, actually we did. We talked about him. It's the dude with the shield whose name I've completely forgotten. Once again, Walton Walter or something like that. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter right now. Yeah. He, that, uh, his character being like this, he takes the place of Hammer from – or the guy from Hammer Tech in the Iron Man movies uh, and um, like the like criminal uh, big mobster or gangster or whatever you want to call it that they haven't, they haven't really had in the MCU since they arrested the Hammer Tech guy. Right. And I think – I mean I don't know why they don't keep those characters around. I'm sure this dude's probably going to be fucking arrested at the end of the movie, but he needs like, I don't know. I like for these smaller movies, this type of character is perfect. Yeah. yeah. Walton Goggins. Walton Goggins. The every, every man's like country down home guy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just kind of, uh, eh, whatever. <laughs> he, yeah. He's fun he's, though. He's like he, he is, um, he's not very good at his job either. Admittedly, which I mean, he's rich, but I, it's like he, I don't think he knew who he was fucking with, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I would, I would give you that. Uh, he, he definitely didn't seem like he, uh, we knew he what he was getting the into. The fact that he was going up against somebody who could literally like crawl into his ear and then expand and blow his, like, pop his skull open. <laughs> yeah. Man, we just got brutal as fuck, man. Like, oh my god. Well, it goes back to that Ant- uh, Ant-Man solves the uh, saves the MCU by crawling up Thanos' ass and then turning into giant giant man. Does that actually <laughs> that happen? Oh. No, no, no. Oh. It's it's the it's the whole it's like a, a, it was a meme when uh, Infinity War came out. Is like that's how they should solve it. Ant-Man saves the Marvel universe in two seconds. 
by just basically crawling up Thanos' ass and boom, yeah, crawling up Thanos' ass. Uh, like I saw, the only reason it came to mind was when I was going through my Google feed earlier today. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw an article where apparently Paul Rudd has made a comment on that. Yeah, really, what I'm really interested to see what he said because I got, I got, I got to ask. He's hilarious in this movie. Yeah. I got to ask, like. Why his ass and not why something like his nose or like you mentioned his ear? Why is it got to be up his ass? Because it's the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I okay. Mean, that's the only thing I can think of. I'll, Although okay. maybe they're I'll give thinking, you that one. maybe they're thinking, okay, you crawl into his nose or like ear and try and expand and like kill yourself and his skull. I, I mean, but, you blood, but, but you're this. up this anal cavity. Like, there's even more there to get in your yeah, way. There's more. There's more. There's lots of bones around there, too. I don't know. I don't know. Because it's the Internet and it has to have something to do with the anal cavity. I would think it would be easier to break through the thinner, you know, bones around the skull that make up the skull rather than it would be to like break through all the muscle and sinew and organs and bones and shit down in the anal cavity area. Like what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know why they just didn't say just like he goes in through the ear and then expands a little bit. Yeah. He didn't <laughs> or doesn't to... do anything. All he has to do is crawl in the ear and then like hit the spinal column and it's done. Yeah. No, he doesn't need it's... to do much. I mean, no. God, why why up his ass, man? What is wrong with you guys? Because the internet is fixated on asses. Yeah, apparently, yeah, whatever, right? It's, so, not, it's yeah. not horrible enough unless that's what's happening. Right, because we want this guy to just be a congealed mess all over the pavement. <laughs> so, yeah, Paul Rudd <laughs> is definitely... The popping noise. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> just, just shit and blood and organs Saved you guys. everywhere. <laughs> We got it. No I it. We're good. God, you smell guys. awful. <laughs> I got this guy. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't think. Oh, I don't think that would work. <laughs> I don't think, I, I hope it wouldn't work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Paul Rudd in this movie is fucking great. So is uh, even uh, the uh, the Evangeline Lilly. Evangeline Lilly. Yeah, she's she's awesome, dude. Like yeah. um. I don't know what else I've seen her in, to be perfectly honest with you. But I know I've seen her in plenty of other things, because she's someone that, you know, we know. Um, she's a good actress. I think if I remember right, she semi, or maybe she didn't retire. There was some story I, I saw where um, I think she, they thought she retired before Ant-Man. Like, yeah. the, the, like the last thing she did was the, the uh, she was the chick in The Hobbit. Yeah. She was Tari. Um, yeah. Or they wanted her for, maybe they wanted her for the Lord of the Rings. I don't remember. There was something where she, they, some director wanted her for a movie uh, that would have kept her busy for a while or something. Yeah. And they thought she retired. So they offered her Ant-Man. And then, you know, story goes from there. She got Ant-Man and Ant-Man 2. She's in the MCU now. Yeah, well, she's also obviously in the next uh, Avengers movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she She's fucking part of the adventures it's pretty goddamn awesome yeah like like how do you you know that's fucking great dude yeah hell yeah oh uh, maybe it was maybe it was fucking real steel that brought her back because uh she goes from being in lost and then not doing anything for a few years uh well, she did a movie while she was in lost um oh uh, what the hell was it called I, I just had her imdb pulled up oh the hurt locker and afterwards i guess yeah she did she did the hurt locker and afterwards the long weekend she was in white chicks i guess as a party guest which is interesting yeah that, that um, was that was you know probably an you know, uncredited role yeah yeah either way yeah it, totally check this movie out um first you know we're not going to spoil all the movie but if you haven't seen it go ahead and skip for like a little bit um the after the credit scene being oh, what yeah. it was for yeah. the the teaser basically for uh the next avengers movie infinity war part two i guess uh, you could call it i mean that's what we're gonna we're, we're gonna call it that for now because i mean or wait no they didn't is. they did confirm what the title was i just don't remember what it was because it was pretty lame uh oh. the end or some shit <laughs> Oh god, it's it's stupid. <laughs> it was it was it really was. It's like in, uh, Avengers. Uh, I Goodbye. mean, right now, I guess on IMDb, it's just listed as untitled Avengers movie. Yeah, um, but I mean, I know they leaked it. Uh, 
I, you know, I, I do remember uh, seeing that pop up in my Google feed and I hit it because it's like, I don't want to fucking know. Yeah. Um, and the same thing happened with the next Spider-Man movie where oh, Tom, uh, shit, Tom, maybe that's what it was. Tom, what the fuck's his name? Tom Holland. Yeah, Tom Holland leaked it himself. He mentioned it in an interview or something. I'm like, God damn it, why oh, do you do this? It, it wasn't the I, I think maybe he did in an interview too, I don't know, but there was an like an Instagram interview thing or some short video he did where he's talking to everybody and then he holds up like an iPad or he holds up a notepad yeah. and it had the title written on it. Uh, and he's just kinda of like, Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, I don't know about Spider Man, <laughs> I don't know about the next movie. Um, or whatever he's, he's talking about in that. And then he holds it up and it's like Spider-Man, what a blah, blah, blah. Right. Which oh, I don't God. even remember what that was called now. This is, this is, I, I'm going to, I'm going to put this in the video real quick. Um, cause I want you guys to see the IMDB page for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, mm -hmm. I, I use Firefox and it just doesn't display right at all. Yeah. Um, so it's odd. Oh looking. yeah, no, it, it's completely just like the top of it is just completely fucked up, and there's you can't actually see the title. I'll send you a screenshot, but I'm gonna show this all for a few seconds here because this is just funny to me. Yeah. It's just it's just bad. It's just really bad. Um. So yeah, that that's kind of fun. Uh, let me get let me take this this screenshot real quick. Uh, take a screenshot. Yeah, this, Firefox. Thanks for. Making me go through that. Uh, uh, yeah, great, nice job, Firefox. <laughs> um, so anyway, back to the yeah. discussion. Yeah, I mean that's to me that that's Ant Man uh, and the Wasp. Um, it was I, a I, good sequel. Uh, yeah, well, uh, one thing we should um, yeah. want to touch on is that uh, in this one, Hank Pym sort of gets a redemption arc. Um, which, oh yeah, where we yeah. I forgot we had talked about Hank Pym, where you mentioned the stuff about uh, he's he he's redeemed, but to me he's more of a jackass. They they make him more Hank Pym closer to the comics, not super close where he's like a fucking idiot who basically jeopardizes the safety of the entire world over and over again, like Tony Stark. Um, but he's they bring up his past where he's had problems working well with others and things like that yeah where yeah. unless it if it doesn't benefit hank pym or the people he deeply cares about hank pym's kind of like fuck the world right right yeah um in this one though they they leave out like in in, in the mcu in general they kind of leave out uh, the parts of, of Hank Pym where he was like physically abusive and all that. And, and they make him less into just a fucking total jackass like that and more just a troubled individual in a way. Yeah. Um, which I, I kind of like, cause I'm, I mean, I don't know about you guys. I don't want to see women getting beaten in my movies. I, no. I don't want domestic abuse hinted at. Like that's that's just a shitty thing. Like it's bad enough we see that in the news. It's bad enough that it happens to begin with. I don't need to also see it in my uh, in my movies. Shoved Granted, in my face like that. I will say, if you then see Captain America beating someone with a corded phone, I am then okay with it because <laughs> then Captain America is beating someone with a corded phone, saying something along the lines of is uh, uh don't you feel or this is what it's like to feel weak or something like uh you feel like a big man now or something like that right yeah right yeah no, ultimate, that uh, that i completely ultimate marvel got pretty extreme no that i am completely okay with you know <laughs> i universe. yeah no that that i'm fine with um yeah i don't i'm still wondering how much of that backstory with him they kept in the normal comic continuity because I, mean, I know he got extreme in Ultimates, like straight up, like you said, uh, domestic abusive. I don't know if he got to that level or if, rather if maybe they just didn't show it. In I, the I, I mean, the interaction He's a bag either way. Yeah. I mean, I, I in the movie, the interaction between him and his wife, like you, you don't you, you see that there's love there and there's not the him being a total fucking asshole to her. Oh um, yeah, totally. Well, that end, he's uh, I mean, the fact like that he the was higher at one time. Yeah, and, the, and but, the entire point of the movie is getting her back into the real world out of where yeah. she was. So, I mean, but I and the fact that, you know, you can clearly see she he loves his daughter. So he has, you know, he, he, and he gets that. Yeah, he gets that redemption. 
But you do also see in the movie they hint at him just being an asshole and not being easy to work with, not playing well with others. Um, when he goes to see Lawrence Fishburne's character, whose name escapes me, he goes in and boom, you know, there's instant, there's an instant friction, an instant frigidness where, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was waiting for them to make Lawrence Fishburne's character look like, well, these are his problems as well, blah, 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 or something like that. Especially since he was working with the quote unquote other, the villain, right. who, again, 15 minute conversation. Oh, okay. Well, we'll save you too. Not but even that. It, like, hey, listen, we have this problem. Can you fix it? Yeah, we yeah. could do that while we're doing this other thing. Let's go. Exactly. Exactly. Boom. But um, it, it, it is really, really stupid. Uh, <laughs> but I was waiting for him to be like, no, we will save you no matter what the cost. Of, no, the entire time he's like, I don't know about this. You know, maybe we should do this. No, we, we you know, we're not going to sacrifice lives, blah, blah, blah. He's very he doesn't want to see her go down the wrong, you know, a bad path that like that to that point, I was like, wow, it really was all Hank Pym. Like pretty there's much. No, there's no double douchebag here. Lawrence Fishburne's at least portrayed as the good guy the whole time, even when he's not exactly he's doing not good exactly things, helping them. Yeah. As soon as he, you know, realizes, Oh wait, maybe we can do both. It's like he's trying to stop essentially what, uh, what he was originally intending. Right. Which, okay. I, I kind of understand because she's just, she's just hurting people to, to get her way, which, and, and, I mean, yeah, I understand why she's going to the links that she's going, but it's like, yeah, it's not out of, it's not out of like greed. It's uh survival. Yeah, no, I mean, there's definitely, there's no intentional malice. It's just like, listen, yeah. I don't want to be this way anymore. I, I want to live. I don't want to be in literal constant pain because I'm plane shifting and uh, I'm going to die. Right. And it's been happening since I was like 12 or 6 or something like that. Yeah, whatever age it was that they, they decided, that, that S.H.I.E.L.D. decided to experiment on her or whatnot. So, Well, yeah. I mean, her father deciding that you know, trying to continue with his work after Hank Pym basically sent him away. It blew him off, you know, him making the mistake of, oh, shit, I fucked up. Right, right. <laughs> Your typical right. Uh, accidental mad scientist. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, yeah. how often do we see that trope pop up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's like, it's a superhero. It's superheroes. You gotta have that at some point. <laughs> right. No, I, I can, yeah, no, I, I, yeah. All right. I, I don't really have anything else to say, and... So I think, no, I think we, I think honestly, we can end it there. Honestly, check the Just movie out if you're here. a fan. Yeah. Uh, there's one other thing we can talk about a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm like, I'm almost hesitant to talk about it at the same time. Okay. Um, the stuff with James Gunn that's just happened. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, don't, like, I don't really know how to feel about it. Because, like, you know, some of the things that he said, it was like, like, you know, he's talking about, you know, raping kids and, and all this other really stupid, edgy shit. I, I don't know if there is a context, but part of me wants to go, I don't care about the context. That's fucked up. You don't say those things. But then again, on the other hand, I'm also like free speech and yeah. dark humor it's, and bad jokes. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I have no problem with dark humor. Oh, absolutely um, not. But uh, for not, me, pedophilia crosses a line that I cannot accept, even with the dark humor parts. I don't know, man. I will. You, I, I'll never say that you can't can't make a joke about something. Oh no, absolutely um, not. But at the same time, like rape, like rape jokes, pedophile jokes. Like I don't know what his context was. Reading some of the tweets, they didn't. What little bit they even uh, like had. It's. I'm kind of I'm on the fence, yeah. but at the same time, uh, my thing is more. It's on Twitter, and yeah. people and are smart about it now, where people realize you just don't post some things on Twitter uh, unless if you're, especially if you're in that kind of uh, if you're in that movie world, actors, directors, whatever. Uh, comedians don't even get away with it, and they're in like that's their bread and butter is pushing the line. Yeah, yeah. And they get shit for it. The ones who are going to lose movie deals and stuff. I mean, they might, but they're not relying on, you know, being working with Disney, whereas James Gunn is. Uh, but then again, so coming from like 2000, 
2011, 2012 or something I mean, like that. Yeah, we're talking six plus years ago. Like years ago. Yeah. Like I don't I don't even know like would it even matter these days. Yeah, he said some horrible shit. But uh, like the fact that it's like it's it's things like Fox News and they're just showing their their colors, they're showing their uh hypocrisy because we literally have a guy in the White House who's talking oh, yeah. about, you know, who who is bragging about sexually assaulting women and they're pointing out tweets from, you know, James Gunn from years ago that you know, are more than likely just there to mess with people. They're more than likely because back then that was when he was in his his edgy, let's say, some crazy shit phase. Which yeah, I, think I mean, we he was like what through. a fucking indie, like an indie director back then or something. Yeah, like, he, he wasn't. He, he wasn't. Was, he didn't matter. He didn't count. But yeah, now he that he does, doing comedies or something. Yeah, so he, he was definitely doing indie flicks, like you said. So it didn't. It didn't matter. And it's like that. That's that's what they're they're focusing on. But it's like you're ignoring. I don't know, man. Well, that's part of that's part of my problem with this whole thing. Yeah, is that this wasn't a case of somebody said so, like like somebody tweeted out something really fucking stupid, you know, a week ago or something. This is a case of he had he's criticized other people on things that they've tweeted recently or things that have happened like the set you know the sexual assault stuff with me too yeah and that kind of thing and i think it's specifically the this came about after he tweeted something trump like you just mentioned right right so they went digging through like the wayback machine or whatever to look at deleted tweets and dug this up to go ah see you said shit like this back in the day and it's like one it's a joke it's very different from something someone actually believes and has done. Yeah, I mean, it's completely different from our president declaring yeah. war on Iran on Twitter. Yeah, like having a fucking Twitter beef that could cause a nuclear goddamn war. Uh, it's a hell of a lot different than sitting in uh, – it's even if you go back to something that someone's talked about in the past, sitting there talking about literally to go walking up to girls and being able to grab their pussies because I'm just a rich motherfucker. Yeah, uh, I mean, this uh, he did that. That's like that's not like oh, I'm joking. No, no, no. I'm I'm did this. I'm bragging. Yeah, like no, he he was proud. It's a very different of that. context. When um was it? It's not Richard Pryor. Was it? Uh, some comedian said you don't the, the you know anybody who says there's not a funny rape joke has never thought about uh, Porky Pig raping Elmer Fudd or something like that. That would be that would be my was my that one and only Isle uh, Carlin. Yeah, it would be that yeah, would be Carlin. yeah yeah yeah. Uh, he he said that rape jokes can definitely be funny. What a joke? Any joke can be funny. You can make a joke about anything. What matters is the exaggeration, you know. Yes. And in and he demonstrates that by you know, imagine Porky Pig raping Elmer Fudd, and the fuck it, everyone starts laughing because it's a funny image. Yes, <laughs> he goes, it's See? about rape. Yes, it's about rape, but it's fucking funny. You, you know, I. Yeah. I so I, I'm all on board with making the jokes. It's all about how you, you know, how you frame the joke. Like he said, Patrice O'Neill, no Patrice O'Neill had a great bit of the, the similar thing when he talked about stuff like rape jokes and things like that. Like, why shouldn't you be able to make a joke about this? Yeah, it's a horrible thing. It's a fucking unforgivable act. But humor is like it, it's a it's a bonding thing for people, you know? I mean, yeah, for me, it's a defense mechanism. When I'm dealing with yeah. stress, it doesn't matter what it is. If I'm dealing with something horrible, joking about it helps me deal with it. So, yeah, that's that's why I tie myself to dark humor so much. It helps. It helps to be able to laugh about something horrible that just happened. Here. You know? Whatever, though. I don't know. I, I don't think they, they should have fired him, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I, yeah, I th- I'm... I was on the fence before, like looking at it because I took and read the article, like, uh, you know, just looking at their out of context. They just pulled this up. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm more and more, the more I, you know, have read into read, you know, what actually happened. You know, these are ancient things. It's, you know, he made a joke. I'm like, yeah, no, I, I I don't think Disney should have fired him. I, yeah, I think it's a mistake. And I mean, we're not the only people who think so. You know, we got 50,000 no, plus signatures. We've got tons of like celebrities like Selma Blair sitting there saying, yeah, don't fire him. That's stupid. And the first thing I saw Batista come out and like, not like, you know, a kind of, well, we'll see. No, he's like, no, this is fucked up. Yeah. You, essentially, they witch hunted. They went on a witch hunt for the guy. And it's not like he has not a fucking um, getting, you know, a 14-year-old boy drunk or something at a party. Not 
taking women and tell, you know, telling them, well, if you don't sleep with me, you won't ever work in this town again. Like, yeah, no, he's no. not pulling. He that made kind jokes of on fucking Twitter. He made he made jokes on one of the least important platforms you can do anything on. Yeah. So I mean, I, the, I it's on Twitter. Fucking cares. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm. Uh, and it's the same thing. Like when um, what's her face held up the severed head of Donald Trump. Everyone went nuts. Everyone Kathy treated Griffin, like it was yeah, the most. She, Kathy Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. When she did that. Like I mean, it's kind of it's tone deaf I, almost, but I like he is the president, and I get it. But at the same time, I mean, like still freedom of speech like how many times have they fucking had lynched obamas in some rallies and shit that you've seen all yeah. the stuff they talk about all but the, the times like but the moment that a celebrity does it or I, oh yeah I, especially and, if it's a liberal celebrity if we were talking about a conservative all the same people would all the conservative people would be like well it's you know it's it's just a joke and fox news wouldn't fucking say anything about it right like could you imagine sean hannity doing something like that yeah like how it would be framed as oh it was just a joke okay so explain the context of the joke to me so that i can laugh with you guys because it's like i want to know what makes makes that funny yeah i just it's it's really it's a horrible side effect of something that i think is a good thing when they have come out and like really torn down a lot of these fucking horrible assholes in Hollywood that I, 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 even as a kid, I remember that was the joke of Hollywood. If you want to get anywhere, you had to sleep with somebody that yeah, these powerful no, I mean, people would use that against them. The fact that they're tearing that down is great, but it's like people are going, Oh, well we can use that for, you know, we're going to just shame anybody both on both sides, by the way, not just, Oh, you talked about Trump. And there's people that like went after, they, they go after everybody. They, yeah. And, it's just fucking assholes, man. It, Both you know, sides. Whatever, man. That's why I'm just uh, whatever, right? Yeah. And at I, the I, don't, time, I don't want to. I don't want to talk anymore because I'm just going to go on like political rants and stuff. So. Oh, I'm not. I, I don't want to go on political, but I do want to say though, uh, playing a little bit of the devil's advocate. Yeah. I I think Disney jumped the gun, but at the same time, this <laughs> happens, he and the even gun. yeah, giggity. Um. <laughs> At the same time, this sort of thing happens, and I guarantee you, like, as soon as there was even a hint of, wait, backlash? What what happened? No, cut them. No, it's done. We're done. What? But, sir, what it? No, uh-uh. We're not even going to risk it. Just yep. do it as quickly as possible. Yep, yep, yep. And, and then it's like, now yeah. there's a lot of people, you know, talking about it. But I guarantee you, you're going to see stuff like Huffington Post and BuzzFeed comparing this to the the star Wars fans being mad about star Wars because my women's or something. Yeah. Just and, wait. And I we, just wait. As, It'll be out there. And the bad thing is we've discussed that so many times about the star Wars thing. It wasn't about yeah. her being a woman and I'm done discussing it, but I just, I want to make it very clear to everyone who listens. Star Wars, the last Jedi being bad was not about general Holdo being a woman or whatever no, no, her no, name, no. Admiral I... Holdo, whatever her name was. Okay. <laughs> it, it wasn't about that. It, I don't care about that. In fact, she had one of the most badass moments in movie history. It wasn't enough to redeem her, but she did. Or was it? It's just like, it wasn't about that. It, it was no. about the plot, not making any fucking sense. And oh, and it I was about thinking about her. I was thinking about the other chick. Just her character was terrible and annoying. And it wasn't about Rose being a woman. It was about no. Rose making stupid fucking decisions that got all of her friends killed. It was yes. about them making a decision to keep Leia alive when the actress who plays Leia is no longer alive. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not even like when I say that, I'm not even talking about people who dislike the movie and aren't assholes about it they're going to probably be comparing this petition to the actual the, people uh, that are like the we're gonna make who, our own movie of blackjack yeah, the, and hookers the people who raised like what 15 million dollars to go to it's disney like, like hey remake fun. remake your shitty movie yeah like um, i'm i didn't like it either guys but no just come on stop all right, That's, we're gonna stop you're the same as the fuckers who did the position to fucking get dc to uh what was that uh, oh no to ban Rotten Tomatoes because they didn't like DC movies or some shit I don't know okay. yeah it's a bunch of fucking bullshit alright well let, let's go ahead and cut it off there before we get off on a rant again about Star Wars yeah 
This oh, man, I, I I don't know what it is, but I can rant about. And is this going to be me repeating the same seventeen points over and over? Again? I didn't even I didn't even want to compare it to the movie at all. I <laughs> just mentioning that movie and Joe's ah, uh, <laughs> and I'm not even as big a Star Wars fan as Lucas, but it's like, oh my god, this movie no, was stupid. It's, it's it's honestly, it's a little similar to. Uh, uh, the whole Gamergate thing, where you know, evil gamers, and then it's like, but no, you're you're generalizing a whole fucking group of people, like yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, I know. All right, so, let's so, let's go ahead and cut it off there. Let's yep. let's go ahead and wind it down. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, super impromptu recording. Late um, at the you know. <laughs> I mean, it'll still go out on time, so it's not like we're recording yeah. Tuesday morning and I'm scrambling to get it together. Like, I still like, have ah, some time. Um, what are we going to do? To our patrons, if you're still listening, I will be getting something special together for you guys over the coming week. Uh, so just keep an eye out on your inboxes for that. Don't worry, you'll get something for um, our equipment malfunction because you shouldn't have to pay for that. Um, for everybody else, uh, make sure you check out our website on godlygeeks.com. Follow us on Facebook yeah. and Twitter, um, Instagram, which we don't even post on Instagram, so I don't think about that anymore. But, you know, <laughs> go ahead and if follow us. If you feel motivated, on. we've got that whole uh, Patreon thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Help us out because we need a new mix report. <laughs> yeah, we, we things are fucked here. Uh, you guys, you know, join our Patreon. You get access to exclusive perks, you know, behind the scenes footage, uh, early access to all of our materials. Um, if we're going to test something, you get to see the tests before we actually launch it. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's, we, we're we making moves. We're doing things. Uh, yeah. We're going to be set back a, a bit. Too. Yeah, we got a Discord. So all of that stuff is uh, going to be linked in the YouTube video description. It's also linked at the top of our website. So if you're interested, just go on and head there. Everything's in one central place. You know, super easy to get to. So for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. See ya. Yay. Fuck yay. Yeah. <laughs>